Hello my dear friends, and welcome back to another video. Today, I want to talk about The Bad Batch Season 3, and a theory which has been on my mind, which might age very well, or terribly, time will tell, but this is something I've been thinking about as we go into the final two episodes of the show. We've been talking a lot about the possibility of deaths, and their significance to the story, and I want to posit that in my estimation, the most likely member of the batch to die first is Echo, and I've got three arguments to back it up. The first is the events of episode 13, Into the Breach, the most recent episode at the time of making this video. Echo is alone on the Imperial Science Shuttle, with no comm. The other members of the batch relied on him to turn off the proximity sensors, which he did, but Echo's now been spotted. He was forced to stun a trooper who noticed something was up in the cargo hold and went to check it out, finding Echo upon arrival. The other Imperials are going to notice that something is up, and they're going to realise the troop hasn't returned, and this might pose a massive threat to Echo's safety. Now, one argument I've seen is that the battery shuttle connected to the hatch of the scientific research ship, but this doesn't appear to be the case, and Hunter even said they were connecting to the hull, but if the Bad Batch creators so wish it, and this video might be irrelevant, then that is one way Echo can survive and easily reunite with his brothers. But I've got to say, the black armor visual metaphor and the predicament they find themselves in, not to mention the decision to go no com to not be detected, is very ominous indeed. As I say, my dear friends, I might be very wrong, but he's alone and radio silent, with no way out. That being said, he was an ARC trooper, so with his training, he is the best of the clone troopers to find a way out of this situation, and I trust he might. But if this is true, was the most recent episode the beginning of the end? Another reason I think it's a strong possibility Echo doesn't make it is that one of the only reviewers who had bad things to say, who watched up to episode 14 who I covered on this channel, mentioned how the story rules out the possibility of a clone uprising show, a spin-off based on Rex and Echo, we had no context for this review when it dropped, but I'm now starting to think they were talking about Echo not making it beyond a certain point. And if he dies, it contributes to Rex's PTSD and eventual retirement. The reason he gave up this part of the fight, after losing so many of his brothers. Of course, he still goes on to become a rebel, with Gregor and Wolf by the time of Star Wars Rebels, but there's no Echo. And thirdly, my dear friends, all of the footage, at the time of making this video for the next couple of episodes, seems to only show us Wrecker, Hunter, and Crosshair, but no Echo. With the shots of them arriving on Tantis, it's just those three. But we've only seen brief amounts of footage, and they might decide to catch up with him later. But there is a chance Echo is captured and handed over to Hemlock. As a veteran of the Clone Wars, and one of the last remaining original characters from the first few seasons, it will be an absolute tragedy to lose Echo. And it should be said, the role he's played in season 3 so far has been very suspect. He has been so absent more times than not. And while fans were hoping this is going to mean an Echo and Rex show, another Clone Wars spin-off, I'm starting to think we shouldn't take it for granted that that is what they're going to do. Echo was not just helping Rex, but also going on missions of his own, and fans have been calling for more screen time for Echo. Well, in terms of this show, time is running out, but just like Tech in Season 2, he might get one final mission, one final fight. As I say, my dear friends, there is the possibility he finds his way onto the attached ship, if that is what Lucasfilm wants for plot convenience, or he fights the Imperials, hides, and catches up with a Bad Batch on Tantis. But I must say, I'm certainly worried. And Jennifer Corbett has posted an earlier than normal tease for the next episode, corroborating the theory that something is going to go wrong. She used a famous Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of the Caribbean meme, and she wrote this. The Bad Batch had a small window of time to act, hitched a ride, and are headed to Tantis with no backup. What could possibly go wrong? She is truly instilling fear in all of us. Are we going to lose another Bad Batcher soon? And on the subject of the Black Armor, there is something very interesting noted by StarWars.com. The stripping of their colors represents a return to basics for the Batch. It's a way for us to imagine their first ever mission. That's what the episode guide says. To an optimist, it represents a blank slate, willing to sacrifice everything, even their identities, to save their sister Omega. But to look at the situation with, I suppose, a slightly darker tinge, the black armor represents marking the batch for their end, like there is no going back, all in, one last fight. 
When we're questioning how the series might end, in just a couple of weeks' time, it's a bleak outlook when you really consider the options. Because even if the Batch completes the mission and leaves Tantis scot-free, what is the best case scenario? Perpetually being on the run, always having to avoid the Empire, always having to change your home, your domicile, and hope the Empire gives up. Just going to Tantis puts them in great danger, and if they escape, that's going to make Palpatine, Hemlock, and even Tarkin want to go all out. Forever on the run, it really doesn't sound like fun. So personally, I reckon they're going the darker route with the way this ends. I was chatting with my good buddy Star Wars Santa the other day about the ways in which the conclusion could play out, and something interesting came up. Are the events of the season 3 finale going to mean Tantis is going to be abandoned by Sidious? If we're in for an all-out battle in the final episode, there could be a big mess and a lot of destruction. Maybe the Zillow Beast and some of other Palpatine's monstrosities come out and wreak havoc. This could mean a minor defeat for Palpatine and moving his projects away from Wayland and onto Exegol. And yes, my dear friends, this early in the timeline, decades before the sequel trilogy, he had already been working on Exegol by the time of The Empire Strikes Back, so it's not too far-fetched to assume the Bad Batch could show us why, and a move there could be imminent. And just imagine, at the end of the show, if an older Omega goes back to visit, maybe with Emery or whoever makes it out alive, and just maybe, if the Batch sacrifice themselves, similar to the Clone War Season 7 ending, there are marked graves, with their helmets over them. Although just like Tex Goggles, this is very likely to be on Pabu, but just Omega remembering her brothers. And you know, the saddest thing about if the mission goes wrong is how badly Rex and Echo wanted to free as many clones as they could. An Uprising series would be amazing. Rex in Star Wars Rebels kind of teases they tried something like this, but they never mentioned if Echo was necessarily there. Echo's been through so much, surviving almost certain death. He has become one of my favorite members of the Batch, so I really hope he doesn't perish. And did you know, my dear friends, a very fun factoid. In George Lucas's original plans for his sequel trilogy, the story had a rebellion led by former stormtroopers. After the fall of the Empire, these troopers were supposed to rally their forces and fight back against the newly re-established New Republic government. While the troopers were destined to lose to the heroes of the New Republic, it still would have been interesting to see how the stormtroopers organized and how they would retaliate. We're kind of seeing something like this in the Mandalorian era, the rise of the Remnant, eventually the First Order, and in kind of an inverted way, if Lucasfilm Animation decides to go the Clone Rebellion route, it's inversing the Stormtrooper Rebellion to a Clone Rebellion, not against the Republic, but against the Empire. If there is one thing I can say with certainty, is that the prequel's renaissance has brought back a love of clones, so hopefully while the Bad Batch itself is coming to an end, we get more adventures with the likes of Rex and whoever survives. But that is where my head is at, my dear friends. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you guys think? Is Echo gonna survive till the end and beyond? Is there going to be another spin-off? And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the Force be with you, always.